Hello Internet! Today, I'm going to show you 10 Blender tips and tricks that will hopefully speed up your workflow. Let's begin. Number one, walking navigation. The walk navigation allows you to move around like you would in a video game. Move to view, navigation, walk navigation. I recommend adding a shortcut. I have set mine to control F. So now when I am in the viewport view, I can hit control F and then fly around using a WASD keyframes. And then if you want to stop, you just left click. Boop. Or you can right click and reset to where you were. Number two, linking a character. Now this is similar to appending a character, but a little different. I'm going to navigate to my character rig here. Then you need to come over here to the outliner and right click on the group collection. And then come down here to ID data, make library override hierarchy. Boom. And there you are. Now you can go in the pose mode, you can move him around and animate him as normal. Now where this comes in handy is if you are working on a bigger project and then you realize something like, oh, his, his shoulder control is not working. It's not controlling what it should. But I already have this character imported into several scenes. What do I do? I'm going to have to reappend all of them. No, no, you won't. All you need to do is go back to the original character file that you linked from and make the needed adjustments, and then it will automatically update in all the files that you have the character linked to. Number three. Okay, so in the graph editor, things can get pretty confusing pretty quickly. Say I want to grab all of my X keyframes and move them up. I could just box select, but then I select all these other keyframes. And I could go over here and hide all these and select this and move it up and do that, but that takes a lot of extra time. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to view and we're going to check only selected curve keyframes. Boop. And what that's going to allow us to do, automatically there will be no keyframes unless we select it over here on the side. And then you can just box select and do that and select and move around as you like. And we don't have to worry about hiding things and unhiding things. It's just right there. Number four, render open EXR instead of PNG sequences. So instead of PNG, we're going to select open EXR and we're going to select the WAA compression. Polyfjord has a pretty good tutorial on this. I'll link it down below. Number five, blur your HDRI maps. So I'm going to add an HDRI to my scene. And as you can see, everything is nice and crisp. It's in focus and it gives us these really bright spots. But what I did is I went, I opened this image up in Photoshop and just give it a small blur. You can do this in any image editor that you have. And I see that that big light that was over there is blurred. And what this does, it just makes all the spots a lot softer. See how much softer that spot is now? Number six, I used a video sequencer to view my audio when animating. As you can see here, I have my viewport, dope sheet, graph editor. And then down here, I have my video sequencer and I have it set to just sequencer that way. I can see where my spikes are in my audio. If I'm animating lip sync or to music, it's really important to see that. So in your video edit editor, you just go to your beginning and you add your sound. And we're gonna come over here to the side, hit display waveform. And it's going to display that for you. Number seven, you may notice that scrubbing on the timeline, the audio doesn't sound all that good. It's kind of hard to understand. An easy way to fix that is go up here to your preferences and go to your system and scroll down here to sound. It's not expanded, so you have to expand it. I don't really know what it is by default, but we're gonna change it to open AL soft. And that is going to make our scrubbing a lot better. Number eight, by default, if you select an object in Maya and press F, you can zoom to it. In Blender, I do believe it is the numpad period key. So you come here to your key map and you search for frame selected. I changed my key stroke to F in the dope sheet in the 3D view. I only did the top one on that because if you are in edit mode, obviously F has a different key bind. So if you're in edit mode, you'll have to revert back to decimal key on the numpad to zoom in because if you press F, you're going to fill faces like so. It only works if you're in object or in pose mode, but I also changed it in my graph editor and the node editor, and then in my NLA editor, sequencer, outliner, everywhere. So if I have this 
Suzanne here hidden in a collection and I have all these different collections here beep, 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 beep. and I don't know where my Suzanne is I can select it and I come over here to the outliner press F and oop, it shows me right where it is number nine play blast animation I wish blender had a built-in play blast method but currently right now all we have is we can change the format to a FF MPEG video and come down here to encoding, change that to MP4. We can come up here and render out a viewport animation. That's very inconvenient though. Got to change all these settings. I have recently discovered this Play Blast add-on though. I'm going to link the description down below. So once you have the Play Blast animation add-on activated, it's going to show up over here in the side menu and then go to your settings and you can use the scene resolution. You can change the resolution. You've got all these settings you can do. Or you can create your own presets and have them set however you want. And then all I gotta do is press this button and it renders out my Play Blast. Super helpful. It does crash sometimes if you have a bigger scene. So if you have a really huge scene and you wanna Play Blast it, it's probably safer to change the render settings to an MPEG video. Number 10, Pose Library. It's an official Blender add-on. So you can search for it, enable it. And what it allows you to do is to go ahead and save all these different poses. I'm gonna make a new pose here with his tongue sticking way out for no apparent reason. And I'm gonna select all the keyframes here, press N, go to animation, and you're gonna create a pose asset. Then if you go to the asset browser, you'll get all these options. You can rename it, you can add a description, add an author, you can change the thumbnail. We have to go into our camera view, reset the pose, um, thumbnail. So if I scroll down, there's my tongue. So say he has an S and then I want him to do the tongue pose. Nah, there it is. Right there. I don't have to readjust the bones and it's just super easy, super convenient way to get complex animation and do it a lot quicker. So that's all 10. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as I will be doing a new tutorial every two weeks. Anyways, guys, enjoy your day. Have fun creating and I'll talk to you again.